Hello guys and welcome to a video about marriage in CK3. Today I'm going to go through an in-depth guide into how to marry properly and I'm going to talk about why it's so important to marry correctly. Now personally, I think there's three reasons to marry someone. Firstly, you marry someone because they have certain traits that you want. For instance, that could be lustful, that could be strong, that could be them being a genius. Maybe you want to make them inbred, who knows. Secondly, you marry because you want to get a strategic alliance with a powerful ally. And hopefully this means you have enough troops to take down an enemy that has a title of yours. And finally, you marry because you want potential titles. So this could mean, it's slightly interlinked with the second point, but you marry because the person you marry has a claim on a title. And that could mean that your heir could get the title of both uh, the wife and husband. So it's kind of more of a long-term strategy. But it could be good, it could be a good good idea. So which of these reasons is the best reason to marry? Well it's not that simple and it's all in the context of the type of person you have, the way you stand in your kingdom, or your king, or your count. But I'm going to give you a few examples as to when you should marry for some of the reasons. And my first example is when you start as a count with very very few relatives or you're by yourself, you're the only member of your dynasty. You want to have as many kids as possible in a sense because you don't have that much to give your heirs and also it may be good for alliances later on down the line to get alliances with other people to have lots and lots of children so therefore although it's frowned upon in the catholic faith you want someone who's very very lustful so you can get as many children as possible and i think it's one of the more underrated traits in the game i don't think many people go for it some other reasons potentially you should marry someone at this stage would be because they have a genius trait would be because they're strong, they've got some other good traits that basically makes your realm more stable with a more competent count that you could have. Um, and also, you could potentially strengthen your bloodline, which is a new feature in CK3. Uh, it's quite cool. So a second example I'm going to give is say you're the king of England and you want to take down the king of Ireland. But the king of Ireland has an ally in France and they outnumber you quite significantly. If you marry, let's say, the Emperor of the HRE, you could potentially basically get enough troops to take the whole Kingdom of Ireland or take down these enemies. So it's really, really useful and, that, and, and that's probably one of the only reasons you should marry in that sense. But I, I would say this reason is probably less uh, important because you don't need to personally marry for that reason and you could obviously send one of your kids to marry them instead to get that alliance. And finally, uh, I would say you marry for potential titles. So if your wife or husband has a potential claim on a kingdom, let's say, you could potentially press that claim. So for instance, if I was the king of France and I married a daughter and she has a claim on the kingdom of Italy, then I could potentially get my heir to have both the Kingdom of France and the Kingdom of Italy, making you really, really strong. I wouldn't particularly say it's that useful when you're really, really weak, because you won't be able to hold it. But yeah, uh, let me know what you think in the comments about what I've said. Uh, it'll be nice to have some of your own ideas and what you think, who do you think is the best to marry. And uh, yeah, make sure to like, subscribe and comment down below in the video. Thank you guys for watching. Hello my children, I must give you a message. Subscribe to the social streamers for eternal salvation.